listening to Range Minded from Independence Indoor Shooting. Before we get started, be sure to check us out on Facebook. Just search for Range Minded Podcast and you'll find us. While you're there, we'd really appreciate it if you could leave us some feedback. It really does help us out a ton. This is episode 35, where we tackle two topics. We do a somewhat quick review on the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield EZ, their latest 380 offering in the M&P lineup, and we cover some current events regarding the new upcoming ban on bump stocks. As always, thanks for listening to Range Minded, and we hope you enjoy episode number 35, the Shield EZ and the Bump Stock Ban. Hello and welcome to Range Minded, episode number 35. Hello, peeps. What's with, happening? With 35 the, already. I had to steal <laughs> what Steve usually says. I figured he would have said it, but no, you said it. So, uh, Steve Zimmerman live from Idaho Falls <laughs> and uh, Ricky Kasner next to me and myself, Mark Long. Here we are live at uh, Independence Indoor Shooting yeah. in the uh, small classroom. We got kicked out of Ricky's office because he, the accountant is still crunching numbers late into the evening. Yep. Chaching. Yeah. So, and we got a class going on on the other side of the wall, and we got people out in the uh, on the floor. So it's going to be a noisy one, but uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. No machine gun fire yet. No, that'll be not, later. Not yet. Mm-hmm. Now, how is your uh, Thanksgiving, Steve? Uh, full, full of pumpkin pie and whipped cream. My, I don't like turkey. I'm not a real turkey guy. And I know that's kind of un-American, but uh, I, the only thing I live for at Thanksgiving is pumpkin pie and whipped cream. Actually, the the original colonists ate duck and fish on the th- and venison on on Thanksgiving. Well, I could so. do venison. I'm I don't okay think with there that, was any but... turkey. Well, that's probably all they had was because they were by the coast and. Uh... And they were pretty much destitute anyway, so they yeah. probably were happy to have whatever the Indians brought. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. I'm sorry, Native Americans. <laughs> there I'm we sorry. go. That's I right. I got to be Native- careful about appropriating. I'm sorry. Native Americans. Thank you. Um, Ricky, how was your Thanksgiving? It was very good. This is the first year my wife and I were able to cook a full, from scratch, cook a full traditional Thanksgiving meal and yeah, traditional in my sense means turkey. You, re- you meaning you raised the turkey? I raised the turkey. Plucked, I butchered it. Wow! Plucked it. Yeah, very impressive. Just plain, just plain. Homesteading, <laughs> Ricky the homesteader. <laughs> I don't know how the people next to you in the apartment felt about you raising a turkey. <laughs> yeah. Well, they just had a turkey out on the balcony for a little while. No That's big right. deal. Yeah, two years. So no big deal. yeah. All in the name, all in the name of Thanksgiving. So, <laughs> but Thanksgiving is now behind us, uh, moving into the holiday season. And what wouldn't be a great gift for somebody other than a Shield EZ, Smith and Wesson Shield EZ, a Smith and Wesson Shield EZ, which is one of the things we're talking about today. It's a little bit of a grab bag. So yeah. we're going to start with the uh, the Shield EZ. Uh, Ricky and I just shot it a little wi- a little while ago, and the whole hype of it is is that it's really easy to rack the slide. It, you sound stupid sound, saying that, but you have to like every time you pick it up, you do you you manipulate it, and it's you're wow, that's really easy. And you're like, <laughs> man, I sound so cliche when I say that, but it does what it's called. Well, that's probably why. That's why they named it that way is because it's so cliche. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe they were in a meeting and one of the engineers pulled it out and, you know, racked the slide and goes, well, this is easy. <laughs> huh. Maybe we should just call it that. Call it what it does. Yep. Smart. Yeah. So, um, if you are not aware, um, the Shield Easy is, it's not the Shield, is it? No, it's a Smith it & Wesson shield. shield, yep. Yeah. Okay. But it's, but yeah, it's, it's different than easy. the actual Smith & Wesson Shield. Right, it's not built on the same frame as the uh, Smith & Wesson Shield. It's actually built on the same frame as the M&P 22. Um, so it's about that size. A um, little bit different, obviously, shoots 380, has a grip safety. Um, yep. What else is different? And the grip safety, what's important to note about that is on a... And it's going to be hard because we we don't have video to show, but the geometry, the pivot point on the grip safety for the Shield EZ is different than what your traditional 1911 pivot point would be, which yeah, makes it's on the it bottom a, instead of the top. Yeah, so it makes it easier. It makes it easy to disengage that grip safety. Yeah. So, um, you know, whereas with the XD, the uh, Springfield XDs, which are more of the traditional style pivot point uh, at the, grip at safety, the top, and the, at the and top. the other thing about that, it's not narrow like the the XD platform. Yeah, where where theirs is only maybe five sixteenths of an inch wide. 
the the entire back strap of the EZ is basically the grip safety, yeah. and it's fairly wide that that any hand can can interact with. Yeah, so it, it so it do, it serves a purpose because what what a grip safety does is it makes sure the shooter has to have a very positive grip on the firearm to disengage that safety, and it's a natural disengaging of the safety. Now the downside, the con to that grip safety might be in a self defense situation. Could you potentially not even not disengage that that safety and and the gun's not going to go bang when you want it to? I I think with this, it's highly yeah, unlikely. Platform, but uh, I, with nineteen elevens and uh, and the XDs, yeah, absolutely. I think you have a chance to, but because of that bottom pivot point on the EZ, I think it's far less likely to have a malfunction that way. Yeah, on that particular. Group. I agree, Mark. Any words of wisdom on your end? <laughs> you're, you're quiet. You're not the. You're not the quiet one. No, usually <laughs> not. Yeah. Um, no, I thought it was a nice little pistol. I mean, it's. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the M and P series anyway, and that's just personal preference. I think they're. I think they're wonderfully manufactured guns. The trigger kind of leaves something to be desired. Um, I owned a shield for a short while. I couldn't shoot anything with it, so um, wasn't a big fan of that. But I mean, the ergonomics are nice. But it has been recalled less time than the Walther PPS. Let's has. let's not talk about that. <laughs> that's only once. I, I like it. I mean, I can see where people would enjoy it. Um, I shot okay with it, um, but the other thing that I thought was interesting when I when I saw the EZ was it's not a striker fired; it's a hammer fired gun. Which I guess that adds to the the good oh. trigger. I I think it's got a good trigger to it on the inside. Um, yeah, so that it's yeah, an internal hammer. It's, it's an internal hammer that's that's shrouded by the slide. Yeah, I would say that the trigger is actually a lot better on the EZ than it is on any of the other M&Ps that I've shot. <laughs> Obviously, you can apex the... Um, and honestly, I don't think the 2.0, the M&P 2.0 trigger is all that bad. It doesn't feel that much different than the original M&P platform, um, other than maybe the reset's a lot more audible and, and, and feelable. But I don't know. Yeah, I'm just not a huge... They, they called it a tactile reset when they, uh, they came out with it. I have a tactile reset on my Walther PPQ. You can feel it and you can hear it. It's the greatest thing ever. Mm -hmm. But it has... <laughs> but again, the MFPs haven't been recalled yet. Neither is the PPQ yet. <laughs> <laughs> yet. <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. But no, I, don't, I mean, I don't mind. I just It's not like a wonder thing to me. I, I really am a fan of the concept, though, because I think it'll get people into shooting more. Um, being an RSO of the women's shoots and whatnot... Um, you see a lot of people and, and men and women struggle with getting that slide racked. Um, especially if you don't yeah, know how absolutely. to leverage it properly. Or, um, if you, a lot of people will turn the gun instead of turning their body to use their, their weight a different way. And they'll end up flagging somebody or flagging their neighbor or whatever. And so mm -hmm. having, I, I think a lot of people see that as a barrier. And so, yeah. um, being able to use a gun that overcomes that barrier and makes it a lot easier, especially to get the proper form down is a great way to get people to start shooting. Um, yeah. And I think 380 is a fine caliber. I mean, I shot it. I was, uh, what Bill would call combat effective with it. Mm -hmm. In fact, right. I will say Ricky was all over the map. He was left and right. I mean, he, his first grouping was okay. And then he tried to make some headshots and he was hitting the shoulder, but I was pretty centered along a, a central okay. corridor. Okay. Okay. Okay, but okay. I was shooting low. Hang on, I have to cut, cut him off. In my defense, the sights are crooked, and <laughs> and Mark is a lefty, so he's automatically crooked. So, the, so they the, just so went the together. The, the sights were pushed to the, the right a little bit, so when Mark shot it, it yeah, was the center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's clear. It's clear. Because being left-handed also equates to being cockeyed. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> and having a lazy eye or something. <laughs> No, but it's a good shooter. I mean, the other, I think for me, I just, it was, I was anticipating more recoil than there, there is because it's a 380. And so it shoots a little bit lighter than your normal nine millimeter would. Um, you know, I think it'd be a great first gun for somebody to, to learn how to shoot a, a center fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and recoil is definitely relative to the size of the gun. I mean, most people understand that, but the size of the, the EZ isn't huge. But it's definitely easier to shoot than something like the Smith and Wesson Bodyguard, which I think is an atrocious firearm. It's nice to conceal carry, but completely awful to shoot. Right, like yeah. an LCP, uh, the same deal. It's so tiny. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, well, so I, I think it was, I think it was nice. That it's, it's that size. It's kind of an intermediate size pistol that, uh, that is concealable still, but functional. And the 380 does seem, you know, there's a lot of, I'm sure we're going to have shooters or listeners here thinking, Oh, 380, that's so stupid. Why did they do that? But we've talked about ammunition before. It's come a long ways over the last, you know, five years and 380 is no slouch anymore. I mean, personally, I would never go anything smaller than a 380 to carry defensive. I don't, I don't carry a 3 I don't even own a 380, but <clears throat> the EZ would be something I actually thought about even buying for my wife. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it's a super popular <clears throat> handgun among our ladies group, the independent woman. Um, they, it, I mean, every single one of them, they, we don't, we don't have enough shield or EZs in the rental cabinet because they all, they all want it. They all want to shoot that one. It's yeah. between that and the th- the Sig three sixty five, which we'll we'll talk about another day. But yeah, we know that, and when I, we'll save the, the ammunition for that one, so to speak. But that is a very fine pistol. Yeah, and, and we'll talk about more of that later. But you know, I'm excited to talk about that gun later on. But anyway, yeah, we'll do our own episode on that um, because yeah, I haven't had a chance to shoot that yet either. Um, but it looks cool. It looks comfortable to shoot. Um, I think one of the women in the uh, independent woman has one too. Yeah, so a couple of them. Yeah. I was going to ask real nice, but. Uh, We'll wait till we get some more yeah. in. So, but yeah, the M, the uh, the Shield EZ. I, you know, honestly, I would carry it if I needed to. If I didn't have anything else, I thought it was a, a good shooter. Um, you know, you I just have to fix the sights. I so didn't think Mark the sights were crooked. <laughs> Ricky had tighter groupings than me, but mine was more centered. If that makes sense. As long as it hit a target, that's all that mattered. Yeah, we hit we hit center I hit, mass. His, I hit his shoulder. Does that Mark's count? shoulder? Yeah. <laughs> Here, hold this apple up. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I won't hit your hand. You're fine. <laughs> um, one other thing to mention is uh, the magazine on the Shield Easy. Uh, like a lot of 22s have, they have the actual button where you can draw uh, from the outside of the magazine. You can draw the follower down so that you don't, you just drop the ammunition in so you don't have to... Uh, cram that follower down every round that can hurt ladies knuckles or whatever it can hurt a lot of people's well, knuckles well not just if ladies you, uh, i think that gun's definitely geared toward the the new shooter and the novice shooter mm-hmm. or maybe even youngsters that that might struggle with with some of the larger recoil and, and but that magazine like you're saying that magazine follower that's it's pretty cool yeah um, yeah it's on a, it, I, I think the gun was a good design you think of you think of somebody that has arthritis or something like that sure. it would be re- it would get really frustrating you would have to get a speed loader but with the shield easy you don't necessarily have to have a speed loader yeah just like with a ruger uh mark three mark four uh, any of the mark series they have those buttons on the followers that you can bring it down and it's way easier to load that way. And I mean, the whole reason it's called the easy is so you can rack the slide a lot easier. Um, so yeah, I think well, it's, or manipulate the gun completely easier. Like you're saying, if you're manipulating the magazine to load or, or racking the slide or, right. or operating with the grip safety, the entire gun really is easy, um, more user friendly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like you said, I think it appeals to a novice shooter. Um, you know, folks who maybe don't have the manual dexterity to operate, um, mm-hmm. you know, what you would traditionally find on a, a, a another, you know, pistol, um, you know, or you just, you want an easier time shooting. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, think I also like that they put the loaded chamber indicator on top, kind of like Springfield does that you yeah. can, you can see and feel. And you still, there's, there's a little window too in front of that indicator that you can look down and see brass as well. That's cool. So I, I think there's, I think it's a great design, and, and Smith does a lot of things that frustrate me. <laughs> there's there's some things that they do that I as a company, uh, but not as, as a, a company, product. yeah. But but I think the material or the the products they produce are, are good products. Yeah, and I mean it, it's a good. It kind of rounds out the whole M and P line because you have a Shield Nine or forty or even forty five. If you want to have a, mm-hmm. a subcompact carry, you have the M and P twenty two as a kind of a training and practice pistol. You have which full, I think is an awesome twenty two. I think so too. I wish Walther made a good twenty two, but well, they make uh, the well, PPQ twenty two, but they made the P yeah the PP twenty two and they redesigned it. And maybe we can talk about that at some point too. They they did make some changes because there were some complaints on that game. Yeah, the, well, the P twenty two yeah didn't run very well for a long time. So yeah, um, better and, than better than like 
some others on the market that maybe I shouldn't name drop and <laughs> cause problems with, but yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause we might have them as sponsors later. So sh- you, you never know. You never know. <laughs> Steve's not responsible for his opinions. <laughs> I am responsible for my opinions and I have to take full faith in them. We'll just, we'll just change our opinions once they want to sponsor us. <laughs> yeah. Right. We'll just, you it all depends on how big the monetary involvement <laughs> might change my opinions. <laughs> um, you can tell we're not sponsored by Smith and Wesson, obviously. <laughs> But no, I think it rounds out the collection of M- the M and P series well. Um, you know, it's eight rounds, decent capacity for you know the size it is. Um, you can get one with or without a safety. Um, you can get one for how much do they run for? Oh, jeez, three three something. seventy nine, yeah. something like that. Yeah, under four hundred bucks. A normally. three eighty runs for three eighty. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Look at that. I, I think they're under four hundred bucks now. Yeah, they're Back, they're pretty affordable, they're reasonable. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, actually on Black Friday we were selling them for three fifty nine. They're normally three seventy nine. So Steve has it right on. Yeah, it's like he never left. He still knows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I watch. I watch the cameras every day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's a great it's a great uh, you know starter pistol even to carry. I think um, we all are fans. Very very yeah. good pistol. We recommend it. Yeah. yeah, and we have one on the rental lineup. If it's available, come in and shoot it. Um, yeah, it's a popular one. Yeah, it like I said, it was a good move for Smith & Wesson. Yeah, and I, I would say, too, if you, if you have a friend who you want to take shooting for the first time or even like maybe even the second, third time, they're a little more independent, um, or you have somebody who's just, you know, maybe their their hands aren't as strong or they're not as familiar, it's a great way to start, you know, to start somebody and get them into shooting. So, yeah. So go for it. Yep. And now we want to talk about, we were going to talk about hygiene, but I think we'd rather talk about some current events. I do have one before Steve talks yeah, about well, what he was going to say. And and while you're looking up, or you're going to talk about yours, Mark, look up that, and, and mine was on the firearm blog. Oh, okay. Because I can't, I don't have access to my computer at this second, but look it up and then Ricky, go ahead and. So it and turns out we, we just found out this, this, uh, the beginning of this week, we go through Squarespace. They use Swipe for their um, for their commerce, mm-hmm. and Swipe is no longer past Saturday or so. So past uh, what is today? Thursday. So in two days, they're going to stop accepting payments from anybody that has to do with firearms. That's completely awesome. really yeah. So we have to we have to completely go to a, a whole new website. So Ryan is scrambling to try to get a, our new website together before Saturday, um, so that people can do business oh, on, that is on the website. Ridiculous. Yep. And so it was just last minute that they, oh, just so you know, you're not going to be able to take payment. So anymore. they didn't give you any notice or no any notice. kind of wow, yeah, very, like a week's it, notice. But that makes me so angry that these these companies get on this ridiculous bandwagon and yeah. Uh, and I don't know why they're getting on it. Like, why now? Like, there's not... I mean, was there a shooting incident that I'm not aware of? Like, a big old, um, big deal thing? Uh, there was another sort of shooting... Well, not sort of. It did happen. I can't remember it was. Some kids got shot out in front of a hospital, but it was more like a drive-by or something. Like, it wasn't a, a mass event. Yeah, so I don't know why they're all of a sudden hopping on that bandwagon, but... Yeah, it's just ridiculous. It's uh, yeah. I just I get I don't understand from a business perspective. It's almost because no matter what your customer sells, wouldn't you want to you know do money. business with them and make money? You know. Mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing too. Like I was just thinking about. So you know now we have all these protected classes, right? As far as sexual orientation. Mm-hmm. So what if what if they said? We are no longer going to do business with anybody that uh, is transgender, and and that's it. Oh yeah, you would have a that would be you would have but what's a field the day. The Second Amendment is actually named before sexual orientation is named in the Constitution. Yeah, but yeah, uh, it's just asinine. Yeah. But you know what? They're a private business; they can do what they want, and, and I agree with that too. I mean, it's capitalism, but. Well, Good grief. And they're just pushing us out. So, I mean, they were making money off of us. And they're they're pushing us out. I, I just, I wonder how many other companies out there, um, how many other companies out there 
uh, sell firearms that use swipe. Well, there's, there's, and what, haven't there been banks that have done the same thing that say they're not going to well, deal bank, it? I think Bank of America made that stand and then something happened and they reversed it. Like they did a complete 180 and said, yeah, absolutely. With Ruger or somebody, they decided that they were going to work with them. Uh, and, and honestly, that comes down. I know we're not, we don't want to get into politics, but that really came down from Obama when he was doing Operation Ch- uh, Choke Point. Mm-hmm. When he, they went to all sorts of lending institutions, like the top tier, and said, "Hey, you know, if you want, if you want audits and and some problems from the government, then you'll keep doing business with with gun related industry." And so they, you know, a lot of those uh, finance companies backed out of of doing work with the gun companies. But that's slowly loosening up, I think. Yeah. Strong army. It's such, oh, it just frustrates me. Yeah. Well, I guess my take is on businesses and commerce sites and all that refusing to do business with anything firearms related. It just seems to me like maybe, like you said, it's a private company. They can they can do what they want, but it almost seems like a virtue signaling thing where it's like, look, we're going to do this and do our part, but it's really not doing anything. It's... well. I've, oh. Yeah, and it's stupid. Well, you heard what Dix did today, too. Did you hear their announcement, Dix Sporting Goods? No. Uh-uh. Today. So, you know, a while ago, they're like, oh, we're not selling our rifles anymore, and, right? Yeah. Right. So, they announced today that they're getting completely out of any kind of hunting or outdoorsing. Yeah. Um, and going long. straight to just like athletic type sports like basketball baseball that kind of thing so they're so not they're, doing any hunting no bow hunting no and everything wow that's that's what sports authority nope. was trying to do before right before they went out of business really no yeah. camouflage yeah all that stuff they're they're ditching now just be, so just as a continuation of the not selling uh ar-15s and all that i think the problem was is because they got boycotted. They stopped, they stopped getting shoppers, and so yeah. they thought, "Well, we just won't sell that stuff." Anymore. We're losing money. They're losing money at that point. So well, they were just, losing money because they weren't. Uh, they, for lack of a better term, they pissed off a lot of people who, mm-hmm. who said that they weren't going to shop there anyway, right? Yeah. Well, they're losing money because they basically suck. So. Well, there's also that. I mean, nobody, not many I, people, I, would go shopping on in person anymore. It's all online. Well, yeah, and I've never shopped at dick's ever I, and i don't think i've ever met anybody that has bought anything at dick's sporting i used to work at and dick's you did back in virginia that was like 10 years ago did you ever I buy work- anything there ammo i worked in the lodge i worked with the guns i guess i stand corrected yeah <laughs> but well, i don't he, think we no, sold worked, i don't think we sold ar-15s back then he worked there he he didn't actually buy anything or i wasn't i customer. wasn't a shopper i've been to a dick's sporting goods before i mean it's just like a sports authority or whatever you have or a big five i guess even but it just seems like it's more expensive than everything else so yeah they're they're overpriced i didn't think i've been there to, to dicks before i didn't think they had all that great of selection so now do you so, think other Adam, stores may follow suit do you think like maybe cabela's or bass pro shops or any of those stores no, are going to move away from that so that that they have too much of a customer base to to do do that kind of thing. I think that would make a huge mistake for for Cabela's. Oh, Cabela's, yeah, they're not going to do that because I mean, that's what they're built on. That's their model. Yeah, right? because it's all hunting and fishing and yeah. outdoors kind of stuff. But I mean, you never know. I guess if something happened, they could they could. You know, I think they know their clientele. They would tick too many people off if they try to go against AR-15s and any of that but and they make they make high margins off of their stuff i mean you yeah they you, do you, all you have to do is walk into cabela's and i mean you know you, you just look at their prices and you know they're making money hand over fist with that stuff yeah that's so. true and people are people are paying it so yeah. did you guys actually hear speaking of uh dick sporting goods did you hear that there's a, a kid who is trying to sue dick sporting goods for um not allowing him to buy a rifle um being over 21 or under 21 yeah yeah thought that's kind of Which funny I, I think it's great and, and he uh, he has a substantial case i mean it's a talk about protected class that that was a protected class at some point yeah he's 18 but, years old and uh, is suing dick's sporting goods over uh his gun the gun policy and a 20 yeah. year old so there's multiple people doing it but good is it a class action or are they just doing separate lawsuits? No, I think they're just separate lawsuits. Um, I mean, I get it. It's interesting. Um, but 
Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll, we'll post the stories. You can uh, you can let us know what you think at uh, at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash range minded podcast about that. Um, but we actually have some uh, very, very recent news. I, I don't know if I'd call it breaking by the time you hear it, but uh, did you find it? It'll be a couple days. No, I can't find it now. That's kind of frustrating. Anyway, I guess I'll I'll say allegedly. Do okay. we want to talk about it next week? I, uh, well, no, because it was on here. Okay. I, I had it actually saved and then it disappeared. Well, there's a, I mean, there's still, I, I guess there's a, a, they're going to announce a bump stock ban. And this is this from a today. Court, this is Trump doing it? Yeah. No, well, no it's, it's the ATF oh. and the DOJ. They came together, you know, and, and here's the problem. So I guess let's go back. So today the ATF announced that uh, you have 90 days to turn in your bump stocks. No grandfathering. You, you will be a felon if you do not turn them in which is absolutely asinine um and you can thank president trump for this because he did not stand up for it he he caved after or you know with the nra both of them caved and and let the the atf you know reinvestigate and and obama said that bump fire stocks were fine during his administration um but here's the problem, right? So now we caved on bump stocks, which I think bump stocks are stupid, but they, they're an accessory. It's not an automatic. So what's next? What else are we going to cave on? Mm-hmm. And how much more ground are we going to lose because we're, we're too damn quiet and not willing to stand up? Yep. Yeah, uh, you get into that slippery slope argument where it's, okay, it's this one thing, and then it's what's the next thing, and what's the thing after that? And, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting because I think collectively the gun industry and the gun world is like, well, yeah, you know, guns or bump stocks aren't – there's no real tactical or practical reason to own them other than just having fun. No, it's a fun accessory, right? Right. And like I say, I think they're stupid. I would never buy one. I think it's a waste of ammunition. If you want an automatic, just buy an automatic because then you have a, something that's got some value later on. <clears throat> but it, it's an accessory. It's like a safety. It's like uh, a, adding a grip to my rifle. It, it doesn't change the effectiveness. In fact, I You're less it makes the gun yeah. less effective. Yep. But, yeah. you know, there's also 500 people killed and wounded in Las Vegas two years ago. And he had a bump stock. So I think he had actually a couple on like you know, however many rifles he had, but yeah, according to CNN actually, and this is from uh, the 20. Oh, that's right. This it was is, a CNN story. This is from the 28th. So this was actually, this story was released uh, yesterday. yesterday. Um, but by the time you hear this on uh, Sunday, uh, November or December 2nd, it'll be a couple days old. So, Maybe we'll have to jump in and, and do a special episode depending on how this all turns out. But basically, uh, you can expect a um, federal ruling officially banning bump stocks uh, in the next couple of days from the Trump administration. This, this is no BS. This is from CNN. So it's not like yeah, this, speculation this not a, or anything. Not, not hyperbole anymore. This is not speculation. They're going to make I'm just move. amazed that they're not grandfathering. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's End what you story. you think of you think of all the other you know other um, similar uh, what's the word accessories and well the other similar any oh, kind of other legislation, band, legislation. legislation. I think of I think of uh, Colorado when they they you know had their big ban on the on the magazine uh, capacities and stuff they well, still grandfathered with air quotes grandfathered old. Uh, older magazines in now you can't ever but, but tell California didn't California said no high caps or, or no bueno that's yeah. true that's true yeah and on this CNN article it says under the new rule bump stock owners will be regulated I mean required to destroy or surrender the devices to authorities members of the public would be given 90 days to turn it in or otherwise discard their bump stocks according to a source familiar with the rule that so, absolutely boils my blood and so no money no, Just there's no buyback. Money. Yeah, and by the way, that's a constitutional infringement right there too. Just uh, confiscation of property. Yeah, without compensation, that's that's against the constitution. And I, I imagine that uh, there'll there'll be some massive gun groups getting together and and filing a lawsuit. And maybe if it'll go to the Supreme Court, and uh, which might have a better chance of of getting overturned in the Supreme Court. 
but it's it's doesn't help anybody for a long time I mean, if it ever makes it to the supreme court that's going to be years yeah i think i think it's going to be i think that eventually this will go to the supreme court because it's the atf and the department of justice coming together on this so it's not yeah. necessarily even like a law that's being passed in the legislature i don't think i mean and and the other problem well the atf can make a make it happen it doesn't have to go through right the they can the they Senate. can make their own yeah which i think is a little crazy but the other problem is, is is if you enjoy hearing topics like this being discussed, get used to it because I imagine the next two years are going to be full of of uh, you know gun laws getting thrown around because that's just the way it's going to be now. Because you think because of the control. midterms, the way the midterms went, that that's Absolutely. how it's going to happen. Absolutely, and and there'll be some another mass shooting event that. We'll start a whole crap storm and and we'll be dealing with this BS for forever until we stand up and say no more. Well, I guess I'm curious as to just where this is coming from, because, you know, there have been a couple of mass shootings in the last couple of months, but nothing on the scale, thankfully, of, you know, what happened in Las Vegas, which is kind of what brought bump stocks into the mainstream because i i don't think anybody had talked about bump stocks in the news or anything like that until you know the uh the tragedy in las vegas and and probably what happened is is after vegas because it was a big deal for a few months right and then uh so somebody drafted some stuff in fact uh one of the other uh, gun news sites they had actually um they had worked on some slow motion footage of the of a bump stock to submit to the ATF for a report that the ATF wanted, right? So they they were participating in some information for the ATF to, to I imagine to determine on this very thing, um, and obviously it didn't turn out that well. But uh, they have some slow motion footage. It's pretty awesome to watch that shows that it resets the trigger. And and it functions the gun exactly how the gun is designed in semi-automatic. It's just uh, I don't right. Know. Well, and what's interesting is there's a, actually a quote from a senior Justice Department official in this CNN article saying, "Bump stocks turn semi-automatic guns into illegal machine guns." The final rule sends a clear message: illegal guns have no place in a law and order society. Which <laughs> is kind of funny because order. I think we would ag- agree all together that illegal guns have no place in a law and order society. Yeah, but I love what their what? I love their loose I, terminology with law and order society. That, well, <laughs> and that's the other thing is that there's kind of an ignorance there. Is that yeah, technically, you know, I mean, it does increase the rate of fire a little bit, but like you said, Steve, it 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 is using the gun and it functioning it exactly how you need it's to do it. It's just making it efficient. That's all it's doing. Well, and I mean, what about binary triggers? Because that's yeah, a whole they're thing. Next. They're next. Yeah. I mean, no, and, but nobody's and, brought up binary triggers. And the, uh, what I was oh, going to say... I'm sure they have their eye on binary triggers. Well, we'll see. But the other thing is that, you know, you don't need a, sl- a bump fire stock to bump fire a gun. Nope. nope. You know, there's... What's he going to do, ban loop. my finger next? Because... But Jerry Mitchellick's going to be illegal. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah, going to be... What, a, what about the... What about the guy from the military arms channel? He's going to be illegal soon. Yeah, they, you can look, go on YouTube and, and type in bump fire and see just with regular firearms without any stocks or anything. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just kind of sad, I guess, that, you know, the ignorance about it is that, you know, you don't necessarily know what they're banning. They're just banning something to say that they're doing something. Yeah, they're trying to validate their, their pitiful existence and <laughs> and uh, and honestly, I don't feel comfortable with president trump being in charge when it comes to any kind of firearms thing because you know when he ran an election oh he's going to be super gun friendly his son's way pro gun i haven't seen anything at all that supports his second amendment you know pro second amendment anything zero nothing at all he was supposed to pen the here pass the hearing protection act yeah didn't happen they didn't back that at all he cowered in the corner because i think he's a socialist just like the rest of them at some point well and that what was it the uh, concealed carry reciprocity act yeah that, that was that, supposed to that didn't go was, anywhere remember how remember how adamant he was about that he was going to push it through yeah yeah didn't well happen. and do you remember there was a quote from him a couple months ago um talking about take the guns now and worry about due process later oh yeah that sounds like real constitutionality right there yeah it makes you real feel really really feel comfortable doesn't it 
you know, and, and I don't want to make it sound like I, I, I want to call people to arms or anything like that, but we need to get involved in our Second Amendment groups and then we need to be sitting in the House, in the Senate, and in, in our local states and participating because it's falling apart and it's slipping away. And if you can't just sit there idly by and say, oh, you know, bump stocks are dumb, I don't want one, what's next? Next will be anything semi-automatic, which is 90% of everything that's out there, 99% of what's probably in everybody's safes. You're going to let those go too? Then we're going to be worse than Australia. We'll have pump-action shotguns that we can put three rounds through, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, it, it could get to that point at some point or another. So, Well, that's what they want. You can tell I'm heated about this. Right? Yeah, I mean, Steve's a little heated about it, but that's okay. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I just I'm surprised at how almost like draconian it is where it's like you said, there's no compensation for there's no buyback or anything like that. Or, um, you know, it's just, OK, you have 90 days and you're going to turn these in or you're going to destroy them nationally. And that's it, because even when uh, the was it the 1994 assault weapons ban? Mm-hmm. Everything was a lot of things were grandfathered, and there wasn't a yeah. there wasn't a confiscation. There wasn't a um, and, and that a, was Bill Clinton, a Democrat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. An anti-gun president. That's true. Yeah, and true. there was no, I mean, you couldn't buy them, but there was no, like I said, no confiscation, no buyback, no sort so, of you have 90 so days. So is this only, this is legislation, though, this never went through the Congress? It's all executive? It doesn't, it doesn't have to. No, it's ATF not a law. Make a law. Yeah, the ATF and the DOJ at uh, Trump's uh, direction, apparently, is uh, where this is coming from. It's uh, submitted a proposed, the Justice Department submitted a proposed final rule earlier this year um, that upended and, the and Obama who's, era and, and interpretation. Who's in charge of the Justice Department? Who heads the DOJ? Who has the ultimate say? The, it, well, I guess the Trump doesn't, but they work under his direction. Isn't it the Attorney right? General? Yeah. Yeah. So Sessions, here's Jeff Sessions. I'm sure under the direction of, of all of his buddies up there on top of Capitol Hill. Well, earlier this year, because he's out now. Oh, yeah. Who's the new guy now? I Whitaker, I believe. Matt Whitaker, yeah, I believe. It's just, ugh. And that's a whole other mess, too, that we're not even going to get into because it's beyond no. the scope of firearms. But Yeah, that's not, that's not, our, that's not our show. I but. guess maybe that's what it is, is, is where this came from, is that they started working on this, the, this rule um, earlier this year, and now it's just finally coming into fruition. Yeah. So what's yeah. And what's interesting is that, um, you know, they say the final rule from the Justice Department is that um, slide fire bump devices, bump fire stocks fall within certain similar characteristics uh, within the prohibition on machine guns by allowing a shooter of a semi-automatic firearm to initiate a continuous firing cycle with a single pull of the trigger, which is actually wrong. That's that not actually completely incorrect. mechanically incorrect. And that's the other thing is that I'm surprised, you know, even in 1986 when there was or no, first, I'm sorry, it was uh, 64 mm-hmm. in 1964 when you had to register your fully automatic firearms. Right. Mm-hmm. You could still buy them, but you had to register them. Actually, um, gosh, I need to remember all this stuff. You yeah, had the, the, Hughes, the Hughes Amendment was, at 68. was unconstitutional too. The Hughes Amendment, it was at 68 or 64, I can't remember now. Yeah, I don't remember. But in the, yeah, in the mid to late 60s, you could still buy uh, fully automatic firearms, but I, I believe they had to be registered. Um, and and then that in, was all the way up into 84 is when it, it got to be a different story. Yeah. Yeah. 84 but, was when yeah. everything changed. Or 86. Guess what? No, it's 86. So pre-86. And, and who was president in 86? Ronald Reagan. And he was? A Republican. Well, weird. Conservative Republican, right? But did you know that also Ronald Reagan was uh, responsible for um, the open carry ban of handguns and firearms in California in the early yeah. 60s? Because Is that. Yeah, he did. He, But in the 60s, he was way farther left leaning, though. True, but still. He, he was he was more of a Democrat. But, you know, he's <laughs> we're, we're not fighting. We're not fighting with everybody on our side right now. Yeah, it's not a it, the uh, it's not necessarily a political divide on this one. It's I think it's pro gun. You're going to find pro gun and anti gun on both sides of the uh, or all sides of the political spectrum. I think, and um, you know you have to appreciate your friends uh, that are pro gun, no matter what political leanings they may have. I would yeah. say, um, but again, anyway, getting back to my point, you know, even with um, 
you know, in 1986 when you couldn't buy, you know, fully automatic weapons anymore, um, the ones that were purchased prior to 86 still were, you could were grandfathered, in. grandfathered in mm-hmm. and you, and so there's no grandfathering in of all this stuff, which I'm kind of surprised at because yeah. theoretically you could classify bump stocks and slide fire stocks as like mechanic, you know, as machine guns or what they're saying they're machine guns or maybe destructive, whatever you can classify them as something and then get them registered if you really wanted to keep them. But there's just no, there's nothing on the table. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting to follow this story and, and see what the backlash is, um, if there is any. So I think I think Steve, you hit it on the head. A lot of people will be like, "Eh, bump stocks." I don't have a bump stock. Who, who cares? You know, who cares about that? Why am I going to fight that battle? Yeah. But it's yeah, and it's just it's a slope that won't be backed out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because maybe, like you said, binary triggers might be next or even a, another assault weapons ban. Who knows? Well, uh, it was Pelosi or somebody said anything that that alters. Oh, I can't remember what the words they used. But it it was any anything like that, whether it be a bump, bump fire, whether it be a, a binary, anything that uh, alters the rate of fire in any way they, they want to get rid of. And then, again, they want to do semi- Oh, excuse me, semi-automatic bands, which will happen. I think in our lifetime, we'll we'll be out of semi-automatics, just completely. Or or they'll <laughs> or they'll be adopted into the NFA, um, and then be grandfathered in. Well, then do you know how the many ones people are pre pre two thousand fifty eight? You know, I would be like really that. surprised. I don't think it's that far away. I, I think it's within ten years. I just don't think it would be possible to have a semi-automatic weapons ban period because there's just way too many there's way too many out there there's i mean like you said pretty much every i mean the ar-15 is the most popular rifle in america they would definitely they would definitely have to do their groundwork and they would have a fight but i do think it is possible i think that it is i think anything's possible to i mean Uh, but i think it's i think it's not possible i think it's beyond like probable i just uh how uh, of three over 300 million guns in the u.s and you're going to try to ban 90% of them? Mm-hmm. Do you think they would succeed? I, I, th- I think is that it's going to happen. I mean, that's the thing. I'm, I'm guess I'm, my question what, is, is it, is it possible they're going to try it? Or is it possible you think that they're, they're going to succeed? What you're I gonna, think they will succeed. What you're going to get, if that happens, you're going to get a lot of boating accidents. And yeah. you're going to get a lot of private party sales. And, and I don't know where that gun went, you know. Yeah, because well, people well, aren't going to turn and, their guns. And in. maybe by that point, people will pull their heads out of their butts and realize I have to do something before it gets to that point and and make a difference. The only way it happens is at the voting booth. That's the only way it can happen. And everybody's well, far too passive. I I don't agree. The voting booth politicians are politicians. Yeah, well, it seems like know. on both yes, sides you know. now, it's you not going to matter. S- and, and well, then being more politically active and getting involved. You yourself. Now, I, I don't think you could vote. And this is me being pessimistic, I understand. But you could vote anyway. And I think you're going to get a politician. A politician is a politician is a politician. Sorry. Yeah. But I mean, That's true. I mean, it doesn't and, matter and if you get they, a liberal or you get a, a, a Republican in there uh, or a conservative, I should say. Um or even a, even an independent, they're a politician. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna say, "Hey, I'll give you this if you give me that." That that's how they work. Yeah. I guess that's a surprising have, part to me is right. that there's they could have the best intentions in mind, but it's hard not to get. You know, pardon pardon my language. It's hard not to get shit on your boots if you're standing in a septic tank, <laughs> and, and that's the way I see Washington. It's just a big cesspool of filth. And uh, and people go in there with the best intentions, and th- they don't come out unclean anymore. It's sad. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm a little more optimistic. I mean, Mark's always the more optimistic one. Yeah, I call we it, need that though. Call it youthful naivete, but I just I don't it's think you're millennial. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and uh, you know, we've talked about how millennials are a little more. Um, Pro gun and pro concealed carry, I think, yeah. than than their older counterparts. But that's true. May, I should probably have a little bit more faith in the next generation because the the kids now that are going to be in power then they they will have a completely different perspective and maybe they'll be able to see you know a little bit more black and white because right now everything is so 
jumbled together and, and everything's uh, in the air right now kind of feels yeah. like it is interesting i don't know things things can change quick quick yeah that's so. true and i and that can that can swing both ways you know is that you know maybe maybe because this gun this the the bump stock thing seemed to kind of come out of nowhere i guess it was just a long time coming but well i think i think you know top tier industry people kind of knew what was going on they understood that there was going to be stuff happening but for the rest of the crowd yeah it's it just kind of blindsided them you know it's it it's pretty frustrating though you see on on some uh, and i won't get in the political weeds on this one i'll try not to but you see certain politicians that really should be tried and sent to prison Oh yeah, um, and they just and the the Congress drags their feet on this sort of stuff, but yet this stuff just gets whipped right through. You know, yeah. like like it was yesterday, and, you know, and it is just like versus. Well, I can't I can't help but think that our Senate's a lot a lot like the the Roman Senate before Rome fell. I I, I can't help but feel that way. Yeah, Ugh, just just garbage and so much corruption and. People line in other people's pockets, and yeah, and uh, you know, feel good legislation comes through, like, oh yeah, we'll ban guns because that'll save lives. Is one child's life worth a difference? Well, guns, we already know, guns save way more lives than they take in a year, and uh, but that that doesn't seem to matter. Yep. Yeah, we'll see. Um, anyway. I don't know. Yeah, well, we, we went from shield easy to super depressing, huh? Yeah, we got heavy pretty quick. <laughs> I guess, so I guess we better uh, best we're gonna lighten up the mood again. Yeah. Well, well we, we haven't heard any dad jokes. That's true. It's because he's oh, all heated no, I from. I haven't got any new ones lately. You ran out. You used them all on Thanksgiving. I did use a lot on Thanksgiving. I have one. <laughs> you do? Oh dear. I don't know if it's technically a dad joke, but what does the buffalo say to his his son when he goes off to college? What? Bye, son. <laughs> wow. Sorry. Didn't you say that one before? I might have. <laughs> that was one that you've had let's before. See. That's um, the only joke I know. Well, let's let's end on on this note, Steve, and you can help out with this because you're heated about it. If somebody wants to get involved and get politically active, what do you think is the best course of action for them to do? So, in our state? Just in general. Well, well first of all, seek out good established second amendment groups um like in our state we have the idaho second amendment alliance um hopefully you know maybe we should reach out to them i'm sure they would be willing to to chat with us at some time um and then spend some time email call whatever it takes your your senators and and representatives um they work for us and i know if i had an employee that was completely derelict i would (laughs) fire his butt and uh (laughs) <laughs> the, they are derelict and they're practically neutered right now and it's just ridiculous so get active get involved you know i was li- i was reading a, a a little a little kids i was reading a book to my daughter but it was a it was a um biography on uh, davy crockett and he he ran he was in congress as well but he uh he got frustrated because it was the same back then as it is today. I'm sure it's even yeah, worse now. Yeah, he was now. a senator. Yeah. And, and he got sick of, he, he ran off of merit. He said, no, this, this is not right and I'm going to vote against it. Or yeah, this is right and I'm going to vote for it. And, you know, they would be trying to trade votes with him and he wouldn't play their game. And they didn't vote him back in because, of, because he wasn't able to get stuff done. The only politicians that can get, get stuff done in air quotes is uh, those who are willing to play games with our rights. So, yeah. Yeah, so get involved with, uh, find a group in your local area, in your state. Um, you and know, if you can't, start your own. Yeah, or if you find one that you don't like, you know, maybe start your own. And you'd be surprised how many people speak up once they have somebody else to, uh, to join in with. So we'll leave yeah. you with that. Um, maybe I can find a link to get you a little bit closer to uh, uh, a gun rights group in your state that you can join um, because it's important. Even and And actually, if you are in a state that does not have a gun rights grass grassroots group. Um, I know that, uh, Greg Pruitt, who is the, um, president of the second Alliance here, he helps other groups get started. 
So and and Greg is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll have to have him on one of these days. Um, I think that would be good to do sooner rather than later, especially with bump stock bands. So, um, but yeah, if and also if you. Um, you know, need help finding a group, just send us a message uh, on Facebook, facebook.com slash range minded podcast. You can also email us uh, podcast at ii shooting dot com and uh, send us whatever you want. Maybe your opinions on bump stocks, maybe you're for it and you have a good reason for it. Or, uh, you know, you have some commentary on uh, on politics or uh, we'll listen to it all. Or um, you want us to cover something on a different episode. Um, we're happy to do all of that. So yeah, uh, get absolutely. a hold of us and thank you for listening. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. You guys didn't even laugh at my joke. I gave you a pity chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. You know, you know what? The other day somebody broke into my house and, uh, and they stole my limbo stick. Your limbo stick. Yeah. I don't know how low a person can get. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's a great way to end on. Thank That's you for good. listening. <laughs> See you guys. All right. Bye-bye. Well, I just snorted. That was even better. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Range Minded. Find us online at Range Minded Podcast on Facebook or send us an email at podcast at iishooting.com. We're always happy to get feedback, episode suggestions, whatever you want to send us, really. And be sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and pretty much wherever else you get your podcasts from. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.